sit when I read this. Because uh, considering the accolades that have been cast in front of me and the what Eric has managed and, and I guess Gene too, to put on the walls here, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. So what I think I will do is uh, I'll read uh, from my journal an excerpt uh, uh, on the first day that I came back to the University of Minnesota in 1961, after I had been uh, on the New York stage for a decade and had worked in Europe and in Hollywood. And uh, I think it's quite revealing because it, uh, it shows you the enormous sensibility and vulnerability I felt at that time, and I would like to share that with you, because what happened since has been so extraordinary. I may not be able to get through it all, and my dear friend uh, Peter Thompson has agreed if I begin to break down at the end, you <laughs> carry on. <laughs> October 14th, 1961, first day of classes back at the University of Minnesota since I left in 43 to join the Navy. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. I'm already two weeks late taking a graduate course in the late plays of August Strindberg from somebody named Albert Gustafson, <laughs> who's supposed to be the world authority on the subject. <laughs> How many here ever remember Albert? <laughs> <laughs> you do, yes, indeed. <laughs> of day when you're supposed to ache with life's possibilities. So why do I feel like hell? As if I'm entering the winter of my discontent, going through change of life prematurely at almost age 40, I'm in a fragile emotional state. You see that I didn't uh, disdain from putting into the journal all the feelings that I felt at any particular time. And the, uh, perhaps the one value that I see in the journals themselves is the utter candor of them, and uh, otherwise it seems to me that uh, it's the, uh, they are merely uh, false extensions of a false ego, if you don't mind the phrase. Walking across from Dad's office in the Center for Continuing Education to Falwell Hall, I felt queasy in my stomach, quite understandable under the circumstances. There it was, Falwell Hall. <laughs> Ancient fortress of angst and agony. <laughs> Formidable masonry erected, uh, no doubt, to impress upon you the merits of education achieved through hard toil, slackers not welcome. <laughs> Halls thick with a stench of stress. <laughs> students milling around, all of them a generation or more younger than I. I could not shake off that depressing sense of defeat and disappointment, even anger at myself, which flooded through me, trudging like a truant upstairs to the third floor, searching for room 313. <laughs> and discovering, when I found it, a sour, unwelcome memory seeping up through me, dredging up one of the best forgotten episodes of my rank failure. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is the very room where I took that class from Professor Frank Rary. <laughs> As a freshman back in 1943, just before I went into the war. Frank Rary himself the legendary head of rhetoric. <laughs> it all came swimming back to me, how he returned my turn paper with the pithy comment etched in red ink on the margin like an acid on glass. <laughs> this is unacceptable. <laughs> Juvenile trash. <laughs> Sloppy. Are you by any chance related to Dean Nolte? I hope not. <laughs> Of course, I was related to him. I was careful to make sure that my father never saw that turn paper, you know, the shameful grade of D minus, so prominently displayed. My rationale at the time, of course, as I was busy acting in productions, play after play over at Scott Hall. What, did, what time did I have? to devote to his stupid class. <laughs> Possible relevance 
did that rhetoric crack have for the thespian of my name? <laughs> Didn't that bone stupid old fart understand that I was going to be a supernova in the world of theater? A big time Broadway star, an actor. Talk about fantasies. Only six students in the room. The window opens, street sounds drifted up from University Avenue, far below. Those other students were talking about this Professor Gustafson, his recent heart attack, his demands upon students, what we were expected to read and more important to comprehend. Again, I felt that queasiness in the pit of my stomach. What on earth am I doing here? Ambitions castrated, dreams jettisoned, almost 40 years old, dear Lord, and starting over. What on earth am I doing in this dusty attic room in Falwell Hall? I, who have played Billy Budd and Willie Keith on Broadway. I, who have acted with Judith Anderson in Paris. I, who have made films in Munich and Rome and Stockholm and Vienna and visited backstage at the Berliner Ensemble in Berlin and even had my own play produced in London with me in the cast. <laughs> what on earth am I doing here? Going through change of life at my age. My father might have said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the room was quiet. Distant sounds coming from the street grew muted, as if real life was slowly seeping away, leaving a kind of, a kind of Soundless void and I, stuck in the middle of it, disembodied, in a dusty attic room smelling of blackboard chalk. I could hear his footsteps coming down the hall, Professor Gustafson. The other students grew ceremoniously quiet. I wondered, were we expe expected to rise when he entered the room as a sign of respect, uh, the way they do in the German universities? Odd ruminations going through my mind as this old gentleman paused momentarily in the doorway. Nobody got up as he shuffled into the room. I saw he was wearing bedroom slippers. He reminded me of some desiccated specimen from an antique world, sallow complexion, parchment skin, ancient lined face, penetrating eyes. The look of a decrepit hawk who had known better days and more tasty morsels to rip into them, the callous students he now faced. I opened my just purchased notebook and leaned forward, pen in hand, as he began talking about the reasons Strindberg was of primary importance to anyone interested in the theater, in writing for the theater, in the drama, in history, in literature, in time and memory. <laughs> Within ten minutes, I realized I had not made a mistake. <laughs> My real education had begun. We have been together for 65 years. Oh